The leech-like embryo is attached to the chorionic sac, which is embedded in the maternal blood and attached to the maternal endometrium, or the lining of the uterus. This is uh, the mudga stage, sura al muminum ayah 1 to 14, and I repeated that before. Then we created the drop into a leech-like structure. Then of that leech-like structure, we made a chewed-like substance, which you can see here, and begins during the sixth week. Next uh, stage is uh, Alkissa Bill Lan, Sura Al Nu Minim Aya 14. Then we close the bones with flesh. So in the previous stage, then we had the bones, and then we covered the bones with flesh. So this Arabic term means a clothing uh, with flesh. And after the bones form, they become surrounded or clothed by flesh or muscles, which acquire attachments to them. These muscle attachments permit movements of the skeleton to occur. Now this is the final stage of development called al uh, Then we developed of him another creation. Uh, al means uh, growth or coming into being. This undoubtedly refers to the fetal period when there is growth and differentiation of the embryo that developed in the embryonic period. The rate of body growth during the fetal period is remarkable, especially between the ninth and sixteenth weeks. You can notice how quickly it's growing in this uh, nasha stage or uh, fetal period as we call it. The next uh, stage is El Kablia. This surah says that the duration of pregnancy and separation is 30 months. This uh, Arabic term refers to the viability or ability of the human fetus to survive outside the uterus. There is no definite time when survival of the fetus is assured, but it is generally accepted now that a fetus that is 24 weeks or older has a reasonable chance of survival. Survival of fetuses 22 to 24 weeks old has only been become possible in the last few years uh, when better methods of providing care for premature infants uh, were developed. So uh, the period a viable embryo or a fetus would be here at 24 weeks. We used to say 26, 28, but now with better incubation, uh, some babies at 24 weeks can survive. And we've even had some at 22 weeks, but this takes highly sophisticated incubation uh, to do that. So this uh, period then is the uh, period of uh, viability or the ability of the human fetus to survive. The next stage is the al Hadana, al Rahimia. This uh, stage refers to the final stages of fetal development in the uterus when the fetus could survive if born prematurely. But it remains in the uterus where it is supported or nourished by the mother. In most cases, therefore, the uterus acts as an incubator for the premature infant. Weight gain during these final weeks is phenomenal as the fetus accumulates fat and is gradually prepared for birth. This last uh, ayah is Surah Abasa, ayat 19 and 20. From a drop, he created him and immediately planned and programmed him. Then he makes his passage easy. This uh, Arabic term uh, means to make the passage easy. It is well known that as the time of birth approaches, the maternal tissues of the cervix and the joints of the pelvis become looser so that the passage of the fetus through the fetal canal will be facilitated. This process, initiated by hormones in the mother's blood, accelerates during the early stages of labor or delivery of the baby. As the amniochorionic sac, that is the bag of waters surrounding the baby, expands near the time of birth, it protrudes into the cervix, that is the neck of the uterus, and causes it to dilate. When the amniochorionic sac ruptures, the amniotic fluid provides a slippery pathway for the fetus to pass along the cervix and vagina to the outside of its mother. All the above occurrences facilitate the birth of the baby that is, they make the passage easy.
The stages of embryonic and fetal development mentioned in the Quran should be used when teaching Muslim students because they are in accordance with our modern understanding of the development before birth. It will also enable Muslim doctors and nurses to explain human development to their patients using Quranic references. Muhammad could not have known these facts about human development in the 7th century because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. Muslims and others are justified in concluding that these facts could only have been revealed to Muhammad by the one known who knows all about us, not only about how we developed, but how we live and function. Thank you very much. The Quran on Embryology Dr. E. Marshall Johnson Dr. E. Marshall Johnson is Professor Emeritus of Anatomy and Developmental Biology at Thomas Jefferson University, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. There, for 20 years, he was Professor of Anatomy, the Chairman of the Department of Anatomy, and the Director of the Daniel Bow Institute. He was also the President of the Teratology Society. He has authored more than 200 publications. As you follow Dr. Marshall on this incredibly detailed journey, he leaves you in no doubt as to the only possible conclusion that can be made. The two statements uh, that I have are that, number one, Allah knows what every female womb bears and what is penetrating into the womb or decreasing and what is increasing. The second, is none knows the future of what is decreasing or penetrating into the wombs except Allah. The two statements taken together can be considered the period of early embryogenesis from insemination to early implantation of the fertilized ovum. The key word in both is al guide which could mean passing through or penetration of fluid into depth, like water going into the depth of the earth. And two, decrease in amount. The two statements refer to something which is passing through the female reproductive tract, which is decreasing and or increasing in size, and it is something whose future at this stage is known to no one except Allah. This something, evidently, is a reference to the male and female generative materials and later to the zygote. When different meanings of the key word al guid are applied to the ayah and the hadith, these evidently point to the developmental processes taking place up to the stage of early implantation. It is science, could I have the next slide please? It is scientifically established or proven that of the several millions of spermatozoa in the seminal fluid, a great many of them as illustrated here, will not pass through the cervical canal, and half of those which do pass through the cervical canal will go up into a fallopian tube or an oviduct where there is no ova. However, some of those which do pass through the cervical canal will pass into the correct oviduct and into the presence of a, an ovum if one is there. The next slide is that of those spermatozoa which actually do get into the vicinity of the ovum, only one of them fuse with the surface membrane of the ovum. This we call the uniting of the uh, sperm and the ovum. Actually, it's a fusion of the cell membranes so that the genetic material then passes inside of the uh, ovum. At this particular time, 
the destiny of the genetic program, the genetic destiny of this individual is established. We don't know what it is at this time, but we do know, of course, that as the chromosomes of the two come together, the genetic program uh, is established at this time. Another uh, biologic phenomenon which is consistent with the word al guide and that is that as the individual, the female child is born, she is born with all of the ova which she potentially will shed. So she will have several hundred thousand ova. During her reproductive lifespan, of course, relatively few of these will be actually ovulated. So from amongst the many ova available, relatively few are then chosen to be ovulated. And if a spermatozoa is there, then at that particular time, uh, it could be uh, fertilized. So therefore, when al is taken to mean a passing through, it will cover the period of the journey of the ovum as it takes from the oviduct and eventually through the uterus to the time of implantation. When it reaches implantation, it will pass into a, another stage of development uh, that is to the uh, alaka stage. Thank you. The Quran on Geology Dr. Allison Pete Palmer about our speaker, born and raised in New Jersey, A.R., Pete Palmer earned his B.S. in geology from Pennsylvania State in 1946 and a Ph.D. in geology from the University of Minnesota in 1950. During his lengthy career, he has held various positions in geology and paleontology, including Cambrian geologist, paleontologist. U.S. Geological Survey in Washington, D.C. from 1950 to 1966. Professor of Geology, State University of New York at Stony Brook from 1966 to 1980. And Centennial Science Program Coordinator, mega editor for about 40 volumes of multi-authored books on the geology of North America for the Geological Society of America in Boulder from 1980 to 1993. Since 1993, he has been recentered as president of the small non-profit institute for Cambrian studies. Dr. Allison Pete Palmer will now take you on an historic passage through time, using the now recently obtained knowledge from geological sciences, which he verifies so wondrously using chosen verses from the Quran and clearly stated comments of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, known as Hadith. In order to discuss the significance of geological ideas or perceptions from the Quran and Hadith, it is first necessary to provide some background information describing where geology is today and how it got there. Geology began as a science slightly less than 200 years ago. Although various geological perceptions date back to Aristotle over 2,000 years ago, these perceptions were never integrated into an identifiable science until James Hutton recognized the implications of the now famous angular unconformity at Sicker Point in western Scotland in 1788. The Earth's crust was deformed and these sediments, now cemented into rock, were tilted and a plain was developed by erosion across their upturned edges. More sediments, a minimum of 2,100 meters thick,